Yo guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Chelsea Explained and in this video I want to heavily discuss around the squad issues we have in this team and that it needs urgent attention. We need to upgrade in certain position if we want to give ourselves the best chances of gaining Champions League football again, getting into the top four, as well as setting ourselves up um, to challenge City and Liverpool for the Premier League title next season as well as FA Cup, Carabao Cup and all that kind of good stuff. So before we get further into this explanation video make sure you like this video, subscribe to my page if you are brand new here and hit that note bell down below so you never miss when the content drops. Ever since our owners took over we kept hearing about a four window strategy that it was going to take them four windows to buy the players they need and then they were going to slow things down. Well, we have had actually five transfer windows now and we still have three big main issues in the squad and this needs, as I mentioned, has to be addressed as quickly as possible. I mean, these players can step up and that's fair enough because I wouldn't mind be proven wrong but I want to get back at our top level where we used to belong as quickly as possible and the first position we need to look at is the goalkeeper position there have been coming out stats reports that Sanchez actually is ranked as the first goalkeeper in the top five European leagues for errors leading to goals, which is three, three errors leading to goals total. And that's a lot because we're already in just November. We saw these issues with Sanchez last season as well. And Sanchez for me is a great shot stopper. We can see that at uh, with the eyesight, but uh, makes a lot of important saves this season to maybe prevent a few goals. And I think his biggest strength is commanding the box, although he made one error there this season as well. Commanding the box and saving shots, especially penalty uh, kicks, is one of is three of his strength. But Maresca wants a sweeper keeper that is great on the ball, playing out from the back and can launch long kicks on players that taking advanced uh, positions up the field and I think he's slowly getting better there and improving and if Robert Sanchez can eliminate the mistakes as much as possible and improving to maybe let's say January transfer window or the summer then fair enough um, but every top team has a top goalkeeper if you're looking at by Minchan Real Madrid, you're looking at Barcelona, City, Liverpool. They all have one thing in common. They have a top goalkeeper that is very reliable. Mistakes happen, but it's about reducing it as much as possible. And I'm not confident Sanchez will be able to eliminate that from his game. That will eventually cost you a few goals, which leading to perhaps costing you points down the line. Getting a top goalkeeper would be a priority for me in the future unless we're willing to actually give a Jorgensen that we purchased from Villarreal an opportunity because he was one of the best goalkeepers. Uh, I think he was the goalkeeper that saved the most shots in La Liga last season. So he's also a great shot stopper then as Sanchez uh, and I don't know how good he is when it comes to commanding the area. I haven't seen enough of Jorgensen. But he's a goalkeeper that is naturally a sweeper keeper and he's great with his feet. Now we haven't seen that if he can make it in Premier League either. So it's still a risk. He's still a young guy. Reska has been talking about sort of his meritocracy that you're going to earn a starting spot if you're performing well. But he has also been talking about when it comes to the goalkeeper, Jorgensen will be the cup goalkeeper and conference league keeper and Sanchez in the Premier League. But if you're seeing that your first choice keeper is continuously making errors and 
isn't that reliable, then why not give your second goalkeeper in Jorgensen, who has a future ahead of him, massive potential, an opportunity? The second issue we got in this team that needs to be addressed, unless things improve of course, is the center back position. And I'm gonna reference the top teams here as well, because most of them have a top tier center back that has leadership qualities and can command the backline B vocal. We've seen Levi Colville improve upon that and I think he's the best center back in the current moment, but he also isn't fully polished yet. He's still a young guy that makes few mistakes here and there. And I think it, if he gets a top center back or just a commanding center back next to him, not only will it elevate Cole will and he will, be, he will be more confident, it will elevate our whole defense. Now, Cole will is playing next to Wesley Fofana and ever since Wesley Fofana came back from his long-term injury that he has struggled with, which is unfortunate, and, and Wesley Fofana had and maybe still has a promising future, but Moreska has confirmed it in... Um, press conferences that Fofana still has discomfort in his knee. He still feels pain sometimes. And Mareska mentioned that maybe that's something he has to live with. And is that something that could prevent Fofana to actually reach his potential and be the center back people predict he will become? We don't know. What I really like about Fofana is still though playing with pain and forcing him through it. And I think Fofana has been, he has been kind of decent. Uh, we have to remind ourselves that he hasn't played football in a long time before this season. He has struggled with injuries. And now he's getting back, getting more feel for the game again, sh uh, more sharp. And so maybe he will improve further. The only thing is that I want to address it as, as soon as possible. Or maybe like to offload a disaster in January transfer window, having tossing and Badashila squad players or even lo loan out maybe Badashila so he can get regular minutes and develop, and then we're bringing in a commanding center back just to see what it will actually do. And it doesn't have to be a player over 25 since we have that under 25 policy, it could be a center back that is below that. And we are apparently linked and have shortlisted three center backs. Here's a guy called Haytham. Chelsea have shortlisted Benfica defenders Thomas Arroyo and Antonio Silva. Bournemouth, eh, Sabarni and Clubbridge center back eh, Joel Ordones. I don't really think a center back from the Belgian league will improve us immediately and come on the back line. Antonio Silva, Thomas Arroyo, we know they got massive potential as well as the Bournemouth Ukrainian center back in Sabarni. And if they are center backs that have those um, attributes and traits that I'm looking for, I will happily bring them in. But if they don't have that, I'm not so sure in the current moment. The last issue we have in this team that needs to be addressed that would complete a whole spine in this team is the striker position. We are going through five transfer windows without actually purchasing an elite forward. We have been linked with Oshiman, but uh, nothing happened there. But I'm gonna say though that Nicholas Jackson has been underrated in my opinion. Uh, I'm very pleased and happy with him. I like his attributes, I like what he brings to the team. Uh, for me, he offers you that he moves into the channels, um, he gets behind the back line, it's difficult for the opponents to track him and mark him. What he also really excels at is Link the midfield with the attack. He is excellent at dropping down and with his close ball control and, and dribbling uh, skills, he gets past players when he's under pressure. And that helps us getting into the opposition final third. So I'm pleased with Jackson in that aspect, but I also think we need us could maybe try out and get a striker that would add something different or something similar to Jackson, but also has Box threat. Those strikers could be, for me, I think Dobbik would be the perfect solution, but he's over 25, so he doesn't fit our transfer policy. But if you're looking at Boniface from Bayer Leverkusen and 
John the Run from Aston Villa, some Omerodium. I'm gonna hold up my hands here and be totally honest. I got it completely wrong with some Omerodion and John the Run. Um, I thought we needed Oshiman, which I still think we could have, but in the current moment, John Duran offers similar things to Jackson, but he's more lethal in the press, and we like our striker to press. He's very fretful there, but he also adds box threat that Jackson doesn't add, and long shot abilities. Uh, some Omerodion uh, could also have been a decent shout, and they would challenge Jackson. Um, because Oshiman wouldn't like to be a striker that's going to just sit on the bench and be a second fiddle, so he maybe isn't realistic anymore. But bring in another striker that adds you something different or similar to Jackson, but on top of that, that adds you that threat with their head inside the box. You also got the lap at Ipswich. He's good at taking on players for his big presence, but he's also really tall, physical and has those heading attributes and add that to, to being more fretful in the box. In conclusions, if things doesn't improve, we need to take action in January or in the summer transfer window and help upgrading the team and help Enzo Maresca. Uh, and we need to get back to where we belong as soon as possible. And I think these are three glaring issues that need to be addressed and we could create a real nice spine throughout this team um, because Chelsea is a top team and we need to get back at that level and I think it would just help us even further we got a recruitment team that has got it more right than wrong in recent transfer window in the summer and I hope they can continue to see their mistakes and improve further so that's all my uh, thoughts and explanations around uh, the squad issues and what needs to be addressed so let me know all your thoughts in the comments down below and I will happily read it as Chelsea explain is out. Bye!